Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving a nice polynomial system. We have a cubed minus 3ab squared equals negative 2 and 3a squared b minus b cubed is equal to 2 and we're going to be finding the a and b values. I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. So for my first method I'll kind of do the obvious which is solving the system by using a parameter or uh, taking advantage of the fact that this is a homogeneous system. So we have a cubed and 3ab squared. Notice that the sum of the powers is always 3. So I can go ahead and do something like this. Replace b with a times something. How about b equals a t? Okay, that's what we're going to substitute. That, okay? So let's go ahead and plug in, replace b with a t. So we get a cubed minus 3a times b squared, which is a squared t squared, which is equal to negative 2. And then from here, if you simplify this a little bit, a cubed minus 3a cubed t squared equals negative 2. And eventually, I just want to factor out a cubed 1 minus 3t squared is equal to negative 2. So that was my goal. Let's go ahead and save this as our first equation. And then we're going to work on the second equation. 3a squared b. So 3a squared b. And I'm going to replace b with a t. Minus. And what, what is my second equation? Minus b cubed. So it's going to be a cubed t cubed. And that's equal to 2. Positive 2, right? Okay. Let's go ahead and simplify these. This gives us a cubed. 3a cubed t minus a cubed t cubed equals 2. And if you take out a cubed, you get 3t minus t cubed equals 2. And that's going to be my second equation. Now, what can I do with these two equations? That gives us a really nice system because notice that both have a cubed on the outside. So I can do the following. Divide 1 by 2. Let's go ahead and do it. So the first equation is a cubed times 1 minus 3t squared. And I'm going to go ahead and divide it by the second equation on the left-hand side, a cubed times 3t minus t cubed. And of course, I have to multiply the right-hand side as well. I mean divide. That's going to be negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. Awesome. a cubed cancels out, and we end up with a really nice cubic equation after we cross multiply of course let's go ahead and do this set it equal to negative 1 and then cross multiply and continue so we get 1 minus 3 t squared equals when you multiply by negative 1 they're just going to switch around and give us this equation awesome now what are you going to do with this let's go ahead and put everything on the same side we get t cubed and then if you bring this plus t 3 t squared minus 3 t minus 1 equals 0. Awesome. This equation might look complicated because it's cubic and there's a cubic formula. You can go through the process, get rid of the t squared, and then use substitution, so on and so forth. But we don't need to go through any of that because this equation is factorable by grouping. Let's see how. Take a look at these two terms and take a look at these two terms t cubed minus 1 plus 3t squared minus 3t equals 0. Let's go ahead and rearrange the terms. And now we can factor this from difference of two cubes, t minus 1 times t squared plus t plus 1. And then the second piece is going to be 3t multiplied by t minus 1, and that equals 0. And from here we can take out a t minus 1 and get t squared plus t plus t I mean, plus 3t, so that's going to be 4t, and then plus 1, and that's equal to 0. Awesome. From here, we get a bunch of different solutions. Let's go ahead and take a look at each one. t equals 1. That's the most obvious one. And what is t? Well, we said that we're going to replace b with a t, so t is b over a. t is b over a. Uh, that shouldn't be implied, by the way. But anyways, it's just a note. You got to remember one thing though, a should not be zero. And notice that if a is zero in the original problem, then 
you can't, you get a false equation because zero does not equal negative two. Make sense? For the same reason, B can't be zero either. So it's okay to divide like this. And now uh, B over A equals one implies that B is the same thing as A. Make sense? And now let's go ahead and rewrite our, one of our equations. Which one do you want to use? Let's use the second one. 3A squared B minus B cubed is equal to two. Since B is A, I can replace B with A. 3A cubed minus A cubed is equal to two. 2a cubed is equal to 2, a cubed is equal to 1, and a is equal to 1. If you're looking for real solutions. If you're not looking for real solutions, you can go ahead and look at the, the other cube roots of 1, which are complex, and then go with that. And since a is equal to b, obviously they're going to have the same value. Make sense? Okay. So 1 comma 1 is going to be a real solution pair for this equation. That comes from t equals 1. But there's another value of t, actually two more values. Let's go ahead and consider the quadratic equation. t squared plus 4t plus 1 equals 0. I'm going to put the negative 1 on the right. Add 4 to both sides. And then write the left-hand side as a perfect square. So I'm basically completing the square. Take square roots. You're going to get plus minus root 3. And then subtract 2 from both sides. And you're going to get the t values. So suppose you go with the negative 2 plus root 3, okay? What do you do with that? Well, this is equal to b over a, and now you can go ahead and plug this in. This is going to be a little painful, but you can do that and find other solutions. I want to go talk about the second solution because the second solution is, in my opinion, is very, very cool. That's why I saved it for last. I hope you'll enjoy it too. Please let me know. So let me rewrite the original problem. a cubed minus 3ab squared equals negative 2, 3a squared b minus b cubed is equal to 2. Now when you look at an equation like this, you probably notice this kind of looks like the binomial theorem. And if you think about it real quick, a cubed minus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared minus b cubed, this is equal to a minus b quantity cubed, right? Great. Now when you look at our expression, this term comes with a plus sign and this term comes with a plus sign, and b cubed comes with a minus sign. So b cubed is good, but this is not good. And 3ab squared comes with a minus sign, so a cubed is good, but this is not good. You see what I'm talking about? It's not going to work. But if we twist this a little bit in the complex direction, then we'll be good. Let me tell you, let me explain what I mean by that. So a plus b cubed or a minus b cubed is not going to give you a combo. But, but if you go ahead and do the following, if you cube a plus bi, just out of curiosity, let's just cube it, right? That's how I came up with this problem, by the way. If you cube this, you're going to get the following. a cubed plus b cubed i cubed, that's how I usually cube sums, and then 3abi multiplied by a plus bi. Now, i cubed is negative i, so this is going to give you a cubed minus b cubed i, and then you're going to get 3 a squared bi, and then i squared is going to be negative 1, so this is going to give me minus 3ab squared. And guess what this gives you? Exactly, our equation. a cubed minus 3ab squared, and then you just got to simplify this a little bit, like write it as, you know, plus 3a squared b minus b cubed, all multiplied by i, and this is what we get. Isn't that cool? Okay. We use the binomial theorem on a complex, complex number. Now, looks like I'm running out of space here, so let's go ahead and finish this up right here. Well, here's what happens. We got this result, but we do know the, these pieces, right? We do know what this is equal to and what that is equal to. So let's go ahead and plug it in. This is negative 2 and this is 2. So I got a complex number cubed equals another complex number. Let's go ahead and rewrite it here so we can... I use this space real quick, so I'm going to copy that here. You know, using the original problem, I got the following. A plus bi cubed equals negative 2 plus 2i. And I think this is awesome, don't you think? So let's go ahead and solve this problem. How do you solve it? Well, we have the cube of a complex number equals another complex number, so I can basically cube root both sides. But before I do, I would like to write the right-hand side in polar form. 
And if you look at the modulus, if you call the z, the absolute value is going to be r, which is the square root of 4 plus 4, and that's going to be 2 root 2. So I'm going to take out a 2 root 2, and inside the parentheses, I'm going to find negative 1 over root 2 plus 1 over root 2i. And what does this point tell you on the coordinate system? It should tell you something like this. The x-coordinate is uh, negative, and the y-coordinate is positive, and their kind of absolute value was equal. So this should tell you, hey, this is supposed to be 3 pi over 4. Yes, that's what it is. So 2 root 2 times e to the power i times 3 pi over 4. This is polar form. And now I'm, I'm going to cube root both sides and get one of the solutions. And the others are going to be just similar. But if you cube root 2 root 2, remember 2 root 2 is square root of 8. If you cube root square root of 8, you basically get the cube root of 8 square rooted, which is going to be root 2. Okay, so this is going to be root 2, right? Because if you cube root 2, you get 2 root 2. And then when you divide this angle by 3, because that's how you cube root it, you're going to get e to the power i times pi over 4. And guess what this is going to look like? Root 2 times 1 over root 2 plus 1 over root 2i. And from here, we're going to get 1 plus i as our answer. What is that supposed to mean? It means a is 1 and b is 1. Make sense? Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph, which is, again, awesome. These two curves intersect at 1, 1 and two other points, because remember, we were supposed to get two more solutions. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.